Scandinavian Airlines Turbulence Scare what you need to know A Scandinavian Airlines flight from Stockholm to Miami recently encountered severe turbulence leaving passengers shaken and some with minor injuries It's a stark reminder of the power of nature even at 35000 feet What's even more concerning is that incidents like this seem to be happening more frequently Scientists warn that climate change is contributing to increasingly unstable air currents leading to bumpier flights. So, what exactly causes turbulence and more importantly, what should you do if you find yourself in a similar situation? In this video, we'll delve into the science behind those unexpected jolts and provide you with essential tips to stay safe and calm when flying through rough air. From wind shear to mountain waves, we'll break down the different types of turbulence, explaining how they form and what makes them potentially dangerous. We'll also equip you with the knowledge to understand the safety procedures and precautions that can make all the difference when the skies get a little bumpy. Imagine you're driving down the highway and suddenly a gust of wind slams into the side of your car, pushing you towards the next lane. That's what wind shear can feel like for a pilot, except they're dealing with it in three dimensions. Wind shear happens when there's a rapid change in wind speed or direction over a short distance. Think of it like invisible currents in the sky. These currents can be horizontal, like a crosswind suddenly shifting direction, or vertical, like flying into a downdraft. Wind shear is especially common near thunderstorms, jet streams, and mountainous terrain. For pilots, wind shear is tricky. It can cause a sudden loss of lift or even flip the plane. That's why pilots use sophisticated weather radar to detect wind shear and avoid it whenever possible. But sometimes it can occur unexpectedly, leading to a bumpy ride. The good news is, pilots are highly trained to handle wind shear. They undergo rigorous simulations and practice emergency procedures to ensure passenger safety. So if you feel a sudden jolt or drop during your flight, it could be wind shear. But rest assured, your pilots are on top of it. We've all seen weather maps with those lines dividing warm and cold fronts. Well, those lines aren't just imaginary, they represent clashing air masses. And that clash creates what we call frontal turbulence. Imagine a warm front, like a gentle ramp pushing warmer, less dense air over a colder, denser air mass. As the warm air rises, it cools and condenses, forming clouds and often precipitation. This upward movement creates eddies and swirls in the atmosphere, much like the turbulence you see in a fast-flowing river. Now, imagine that ramp getting steeper and the warm air being forced upward more rapidly. That's what happens with cold fronts and it leads to more intense turbulence. The friction between the opposing air masses creates powerful updrafts and downdrafts, making for a very bumpy ride. Frontal turbulence is most common near thunderstorms, so if you're flying through a storm system, expect some bumps along the way. Pilots are well aware of frontal systems and use weather forecasts and radar to navigate around the most severe areas. However, it's not always possible to avoid turbulence completely, especially near strong fronts. On a scorching summer day, have you ever seen the air shimmering above a hot asphalt road? That's convection at work. The sun heats the ground, which in turn heats the air directly above it. This hot air, being less dense, rises like a hot air balloon, creating an upward current. Now imagine this happening on a much larger scale with vast columns of rising air. That's convective turbulence, and it's a common culprit behind those unexpected bumps, especially during takeoff and landing. As the hot air rises, it creates an area of low pressure and cooler air rushes in to fill the void. This constant cycle of rising and sinking air creates invisible thermals that can jostle an aircraft. Convective turbulence is most common on hot days over land masses that absorb a lot of solar radiation. It's also more prevalent at lower altitudes where the air is closer to the heated ground. Pilots are trained to anticipate convective turbulence by observing cloud formations, wind patterns and temperature readings. They may adjust their altitude or flight path to minimize passenger discomfort. However, some bumps are unavoidable, especially during the critical phases of takeoff and landing. Chapter 4. Wake Turbulence – The Invisible Jet Stream You've probably seen birds flying in formation, taking advantage of the updraft created by the bird in front. Well, airplanes create their own kind of updraft, known as wake turbulence, and it can be a real hazard especially for smaller aircraft. Imagine an airplane wing slicing through the air. The air flowing over the wing is deflected downwards, creating a swirling vortex of air behind each wingtip. These vortices, invisible to the naked eye, act like miniature tornadoes, 
trailing behind the aircraft like invisible jet streams. Wake turbulence is strongest behind large, heavy aircraft, especially during takeoff and landing when the wings are generating maximum lift. For smaller aircraft following too closely, encountering these vortices can be like hitting a sudden wall of wind, causing a sudden roll or even a loss of control. That's why air traffic controllers are meticulous about maintaining safe separation distances between aircraft, especially during takeoff and landing. They use a complex system of radar, altitude assignments, and time intervals to ensure that wake turbulence has time to dissipate before another aircraft crosses its path. Chapter 5. Mechanical Turbulence – When Nature Meets Man-Made Obstacles Picture a river flowing smoothly until it encounters a series of large boulders. The water is forced to flow around these obstacles, creating rapids, eddies and unpredictable currents. That's a bit like what happens with mechanical turbulence, where man-made structures disrupt the smooth flow of air. Think of tall buildings, bridges, even mountains, acting like those boulders in our river analogy. As wind hits these structures, it's forced to flow over, under and around them, creating swirling eddies and unpredictable air currents in the process. Mechanical turbulence is most common in areas with complex terrain, such as mountainous regions or cities with dense skylines. It's typically localized and short-lived, but it can still create unexpected bumps, especially for aircraft flying at lower altitudes. Pilots are trained to anticipate mechanical turbulence by studying terrain maps and wind patterns. They may adjust their altitude, airspeed or flight path to minimize the impact on passengers. In some cases, they may even issue a brief warning to passengers to expect some bumps. Chapter 6. Clear Air Turbulence – The Invisible Threat Imagine driving down a seemingly calm road only to hit a sudden dip or bump that sends your car bouncing. That's a bit like what clear air turbulence, or CAT, can feel like for those on board an aircraft. It's turbulence that occurs in clear skies with no visual cues like clouds or thunderstorms to warn pilots or passengers. CAT is often associated with jet streams, those fast-flowing rivers of air high up in the atmosphere. When these jet streams encounter slower-moving air masses, the boundary between them can become unstable, creating waves and eddies much like those you see on the surface of a river. These invisible waves can cause sudden updrafts and downdrafts, catching aircraft off guard. CAT is most common at high altitudes, where jet streams are prevalent, and it can occur in patches, meaning an aircraft might experience smooth sailing for a while, followed by a sudden jolt. Predicting CAT is a challenge, even with advanced weather forecasting. Pilots rely on a combination of weather reports, pilot reports from other aircraft, and onboard sensors to detect changes in air pressure and wind speed that might indicate CAT. Chapter 7 Mountain Wave Turbulence Nature's Roller Coaster Imagine a wave, not on the ocean, but in the sky, rippling for miles beyond a mountain range. That's what mountain wave turbulence is all about, and it's one of the most powerful and potentially dangerous forms of turbulence. When strong winds blow perpendicular to a mountain range, they're forced to rise up and over the peaks. As the air flows over the mountain crest, it creates a series of waves that can extend for hundreds of miles downwind. These waves, invisible to the naked eye, can create extremely powerful updrafts and downdrafts, capable of tossing even large aircraft around like toys. Mountain wave turbulence is most common near mountainous terrain, as the name suggests. It's particularly intense when strong winds blow perpendicular to the mountain range, and it can be exacerbated by atmospheric conditions such as temperature inversions, where a layer of warm air sits atop a layer of cold air. Pilots are trained to recognize the signs of mountain wave turbulence, such as lenticular clouds, which are smooth, lens-shaped clouds that often form downwind of mountains. They use weather forecasts, terrain maps, and onboard sensors to avoid flying through the most severe areas of mountain wave turbulence. Otro staying safe when the skies get rough. We've covered a lot of ground, or should I say, air, in this video. From wind shear to mountain waves, we've explored the invisible forces that can turn a smooth flight into a bumpy ride. But remember, turbulence, while unsettling, is a normal part of flying. Pilots are highly trained to handle all types of turbulence, and aircraft are designed to withstand even the most severe jolts. The most important thing you can do as a passenger is to follow those safety instructions, keep your seatbelt fastened whenever seated, and listen to the flight attendants. They're there for your safety and will guide you through any rough patches. Staying informed about the weather conditions before your flight and understanding the different types of turbulence can help you feel more prepared and less anxious when those unexpected bumps do occur. 
So, the next time you're on a flight and feel a little turbulence, remember what you've learned. Take a deep breath, trust the pilots, and enjoy the ride knowing that you're in good hands. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more informative content to keep you safe and informed on your travels.